American football in Finland. The voice in your ears and the face on your screen. I'm Perfect Purvis, and this is American football in Finland. Today, I'm joined by my co-host, Coach Q. What up, Q? What up, what up? We back, baby. Again, for another one. The AFF podcast is available everywhere you listen to podcasts, and now you can visually see us on YouTube. Make sure you follow, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you don't do that, that's okay. We know you're a hater. We're going to call you a fan anyway. Let's get on with the show. All right, it's first down. We take a chance to kind of talk about whatever's going on with us. Uh, Q, what you got going nowadays, man? Ain't nothing, man. The same old, same old. Just working, man. Working from home, chilling. You know, normal life, man. Uh, I don't really have anything going on interesting myself. Uh, excited about summer coming. Uh, I guess when this show comes out, it'll be closer to Vapu. If anybody knows about Vapu, it's like Labor Day out here in Finland. Vapu is really the whole the sign that you know the the some the winter slash spring is really over. Usually May first is the last time I really see snow snow, and then it starts like the days get longer, uh, the sun is out more. You start feeling like okay, it ain't that bad. So I'm excited to get to there, and right now we're excited to start talking football. Yes, sir. Are you a fan of the American Football in Finland podcast? Show your support and style. Rock our logo proudly on hoodies, t-shirts, beanies, and snapbacks, all designed for fans like you. Join us in celebrating American football in Finland. Grab your gear and be a part of the AFF community. All right, I'm going to skip the the whole preview part. This is the last uh, episode we got on team previews. We're talking about the Helsinki Wolverines. Let's just jump right into it. Mm-hmm. Biggest changes <laughs> for the Wolverines, man. What you got? Oh, <laughs> uh, man, everything, man. <laughs> coaching staff, coaching staff, imports, players. Uh, I think the Wolverines really have to have to decide uh, uh, what's the what's the plan for the future. You know, so the biggest change would be what's, what what are we trying to do going forward? Are we trying to be the historic uh, Helsinki Wolverines that people remember and, and know? Um, or are you just going to keep, you know, saying you rebuilding every year? Um, so far, I, the, the signings that I have seen, I mean, Darius is, is is one that, you know, that's a good sign to have. He can play a lot of positions. Um, but, but other than that, I'm not sure exactly what their plan is for this year. Um, uh, they trying to compete or just win enough to stay in and then next year maybe do something, I'm not sure. Um, but I think the biggest change is, uh, would be just them having new faces again. You know, some of the older guys, the younger guys getting more experience, um, seeing them in different roles now, being that they've got a season or two under their belts. Um, that's the biggest change, is seeing, seeing those uh, personalities come out now to be a little more comfortable on the field. Um, so the coaches getting used to the players, the players getting used to the coaches, um, seeing what type of imports they want to bring in other than what they've already signed. Um, it's a lot up in the air still about the Wolverines, though. You know, so I think right now the change is the whole organization, the team, everything is changing. So um, we don't know exactly how to feel. That's not necessarily a good thing when you're coming into the season and we're already um, in April. Um, so you kind of, you know, if we don't really know what's going on. I'm sure it's a lot of other people that's probably on the team that may feel that way, too. You never know. But one thing the Wolverines do have, they have Wolverine guys. They have guys that are no matter what going to play for the Wolverines. So they're going to have a team regardless. Um, they're going to show up regardless. And, uh, you know, they're going to compete. Whether they are really good or really bad, they're going to compete. And that's what you want, you know. Um, but as far as changes, I think just the coaching staff changed. Uh, you know, just seeing seeing, seeing new people there, like we've been seeing for the last five years, I guess. You know, we've been seeing people in and out. And nobody has seemed to figure it out. For some reason, they they won't email me. And talk about it. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. I don't know what I did, y'all. You know, but uh, <laughs> but no, nah, but uh, we'll see, man. You know, it's just up in the air. I think everybody's just kind of trying to trying to see, like, all right, what are they gonna do? What is it, what are the plans? So, um, biggest change is just everything for me, man. If I can answer it that way. Yeah, I agree with you. It's it's pretty much everything for this team. Is 
we similar to what we said about the I want to say the Quopio Steelers, you know, it's a, a different culture, a different team than what we're accustomed to. Last year, I, I really feel like you can just write last year off as like a a skipped <laughs> year. Like I yeah. feel like um the, even though they're they brought back the same coaching staff, which we thought was surprising, but everything that coaching staff did last year, I don't think they're building on that. Mm. I think last year they just were like, we're gonna get through this year. And they, I think it was a reset year. While this year, we're going to see what they really want to get accomplished. What do they really want to do? I think last year was kind of like a, I mean, especially with them knowing that they couldn't get relegated, there wasn't that sense of urgency that we're going to yeah. see this year. They're going to have mm-hmm. a sense of urgency of like, hey, we want to get this done. Hey, we want to do that. But also you have those players, like you said, that are a little bit more experienced. Last year, they had a whole bunch of kids out there. <laughs> that didn't didn't need to be out there, had no business out there, and then wasn't getting no breaks out there. Like they they was getting put in the in the wood chipper out there. Mm-hmm. And this year, a lot of those younger kids are now coming back with what a lot of people like to call experience. And I just want to throw this out there. All experience ain't good experience. And a lot of those kids last year did not get good experience. They just played. They saw stuff that they they never saw before, but what I saw from the beginning of the season to the end of the season, especially defensively, they didn't really progress. They didn't really get better. And I think the biggest change that they're going to have is I feel like from what I've been told and what you know people have said, obviously we'll see it on the field, they've actually been progressing in this offseason. They've been doing things with purpose, with urgency, as they prepare for this season. So that's going to be a huge change to see a team that, is it going to look like what they did last year? But they are definitively better than what they were last year. Now, will that be enough to keep them from being um, cellar dwellers? I don't know. Another big change I'm going to throw out there is I think the progression of Rasmus Lalo at quarterback is going to be a big change. I think last year a lot of people saw a quarterback in a horrible situation and kind of wrote him off as, oh, well, he's not a good quarterback. And I don't know – I can't remember if we said it on the podcast or not, but he made some some really good plays last year. He was very, very good decision-making with the ball, mm-hmm. but then points where he had to make business decisions a lot. And he's still alive, so that means he made the right decision. <laughs> but a lot of times he was put in situations where I was like, he ain't going to make it. He ain't yeah. going to make it out there. And then he, you know, pull something out of his hat and still be able to live to tell the tale. I think this year you're going to see a progression. You're going to see him play more like he did when he was in Division One the last couple of years, where uh, two years ago he was a Division One MVP. Like that's that's the caliber he is at the quarterback position. Now, is that going to be good enough to compete in the Maple League? I don't know. I'm not going to say that, but I am going to say that we're going to see a much more defined and. Um, capable quarterback because I think if he's been doing what I think he's been doing in the offseason he's definitely been letting the, the coaches and players know that he needs some help up front if uh, they have some help up front this year which we expect them to have you're going to see a team that can you know move the ball down the field they they showed flashes last year like we we talked about it on the podcast so many times we were like man for like two drives or for this one drive they get mm-hmm. down there some crazy would happen that that's that one year, you know, you just got to get through it. Now you bring back that same quarterback. He has that experience. That's going to help him finish drives. He's going to be able to make those decisions instead of them relying on the coach's experience, which again, I feel like the coach's experience in the Maple league isn't going to be what makes this team great. I think it's going to be what that quarterback does and what the defense does for this team. And mm. I'm getting away from changes. So we'll just move on <laughs> love- about this next. Went way off there. You gave him the yeah. I just started talking. <laughs> <laughs> Calling all youth football players. Are you ready to shine this midsummer? Join us at the AFF Nordic Challenge, June 18th through 21st in Helsinki. Showcase your skills to USA college coaches. Train with some of the top coaches in Europe and compete in one-on-ones. Get insider tips at exclusive recruiting sessions and seize international opportunities. You can even win big with camp-sponsored prizes. Space is limited, so register now. 
I'm here with Helsinki Wolverines head coach, Pekka Lamansalo. Pekka, welcome to the podcast, man. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm fired up to talk some football. Of course, man. So we're going to jump right into it. You know, last year, Wolverines didn't have a typical Wolverine season. And me and you even talked personally that, you know, you guys were going through things and you were okay with what happened. You got a lot of young guys got to play. A lot of players got experience. But now it's 2024. We're, we're back into, okay, we're trying to get some wins and we're trying to build on this thing here in Helsinki. What is – what is some of the the driving force for you guys this season this year? Like, what are kind of some of the things you want to get accomplished? Well, naturally, uh, when a new coaching staff comes in, uh, there's going to be new verbiage, a new kind of culture set. Uh, I was I was lucky to follow follow up with like uh, coach Coach Mattingly, who had a a good good kind of like basis built. In, in 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 the team but of course like uh we um we felt that we wanted to improve our or like increase the core of finnish players that we had and um naturally like uh there was a lot of learning on both sides both the coaching staff and the and the players and um we were putting a young 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 team into a very tough position um this this season of course we're going to be building on that uh last season the mo- main main focus was um finding those core players those cornerstone players that we want to build around and and we feel that we we feel very strongly that we actually accomplished that uh we found Capo uh, Capo Vioja for example played an in, in, incredibly good season as as cornerback even though he was put into a very tough situation playing most most wide receiver ones and uh we we feel that we can build a, around him on defense um on offense well naturally rasse rasse has been improving throughout the season and we feel that we we we, we can build around him in the future uh, but this season it's 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 mainly building building up on the verbiage um building up the culture understanding what winning behavior is trying to get more of that winning behavior and build 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 habits habits for our players to kind of understand what it requires to be successful in this league and uh on the roster building side of course we need more depth like uh we we severely need more players and uh we feel that we've accomplished that through a different 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 channels uh we we have a a very very good uh cooperation with the Alda predators these days uh you can you can see some of the Alda guys who started off um in alto going on and having a lot of success in in the butchers for example uh ilmari ilmari and uh, atra to mention a few few there and we feel that in a few years we are going to be able to have have success with with those alto guys as well um naturally uh other 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 areas where we want to improve of course is 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 getting these uh domestic players uh from other teams uh sampo vino Mackie, to mention mention one one person has signed with us and uh we are able to improve our uh wide receiver core and white and uh, wide receiver room there so like plenty of different approaches and i feel that like with with the core from last year being one one year uh more more experienced we feel that we can actually shock some some people this year that's awesome man it sounds like you've been busy in the off season you know trying to make sure you make yeah. the improvements um i want to talk a little bit about like the on the field stuff without you know giving away your secrets but last year from from what I saw on the field, you guys' offense, you know, physically and depth-wise, you were a little bit overwhelmed, and that's to be expected when you don't have the numbers and a lot of your players are young. But your offensive scheme was – it was sound. Like, you had very good play calling um, as the season progressed. I, I I will be honest, at the beginning of the season, I think you tried to do a little more than you could handle. But once you guys figured out what you could and couldn't do, you're very consistent. You had – there were a lot of times – when you got to see like there was flashes of you guys doing what you do well consistently and then you know something 
fluky what happened, and that comes with, you know, first time in the Maple Leaf for a lot of the guys. But then on the defensive side, you guys played tough all year. And that's pretty much all you could do defensively sometimes against the talent in the Maple League. But I, I want to ask you, like, going into this season, what are some things that you guys are kind of, like, you know, improve on on the offensive defensive side to make sure you can compete even better this year? This year? Yeah, that's a good question. And, uh, yeah, I, I, I agree on your assessment on both the offense and the defense. Like, I feel that we were able to move the ball, but – then then something always happened and uh, <laughs> yes. mostly mostly it was us shooting ourselves in the foot uh mm-hmm. but, um offensively uh our main or like um uh, there's not going like i'm not probably going to give give a lot away by saying that yes we will be continuing with our uh wide zone uh approach this season so so plenty of wide zone complementing it with duo uh uh and of course it, anybody who knows some white zone offenses you 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 have to have that bootleg element in in it uh the main focus that we've had we've been focusing on with the offense though is is the drop back passing game uh i pretty much mm-hmm. scrapped it and uh started yeah. running, uh, <laughs> like the, that 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 was where we were, we had the most trouble mainly mainly due to pass protection i i don't feel that like rasa was actually seeing seeing the correct things things most of the time um the the main thing was that we need to protect him better and uh that 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 meant that i had to like i had my like my uh, background in is in coaching air raid and the, the unfortunate thing about that is that usually you have to have your running back in in a route for most of the concepts to work work nicely. Uh, mm-hmm. So with our drop back passing game, it's it's going to be uh, most like or le- less running back heavy, so that we can have a running back in the pass protection a little bit more, um, and it's it's going to be a bit more. Um, working working with what what we know Rasse can do and uh how uh, how he's good he's good at reading defenses so we feel that we can go into the right direction if we just give him give give him the protection but like yeah mainly mainly the drop back passing game and the pass pro is something that we've, we've needed to work on and yeah that's really like our line uh it's not going to be something that we can change immediately but uh at least i as a uh, play caller can um try and help with with matchups and not 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 force 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 any of our guys to play against matchups that are uh too difficult so i need to be able to send help help where, where it is needed in the pass protection so that's one one key element on the offense um on the defense uh i think uh yeah uh we were very very tough and uh, i i didn't see a lot of quitting quitting in that so we pursued well um uh, there were there there was a lot good, a lot of good tackling uh, i think mainly it was in in the deep deep balls especially when we we were in situations where we had to have our young go- cornerbacks playing against uh, uh veteran veteran american wideouts where we had, had had a lot of trouble so like we need to be able to stop explosive plays uh we need to be able to uh cover the pass much better than what with what we were able to and we're hoping that now that we're bringing darius darius lewis back he's he's, he's been rehabbing from his achilles injury but he's he's doing really well he's he's already able to practice and uh move around so we've, we've we feel that uh darius has brought in quite a lot on that end okay that's awesome i mean i'm i'm really interested to see how you guys progress because i think last year was a lot of a lot of learning for both the coaches and the players and then this year we're going to see where you go from that so it's a really interesting aspect next thing i want to ask you about is uh give us a little bit of an update you know on players that we should be looking out for from the wolverines this year you know like you said a lot of domestic players but a lot of those names that you've already named a lot of people don't know so if you can even rename some of those guys and tell us a little bit about some guys that will be key contributors for you this season yeah um on running back like uh, Seb- sebastian lugora who was pretty much a workhorse for us last season uh i feel that he's 
he's come into practice looking much stronger, much faster than last season. He's been working on his uh, uh, gym routine and uh, getting more explosive uh, from last season. I feel that he's 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 on the edge of uh, breaking out. I feel uh, especially once again the wide zone offense. It's 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 tough for a running back because we require him to be able to read read the plays and uh it might sometimes take a little bit of while for him to understand how how to read it how to find the space but now that he's got one one year in in the system i feel that he's going to have a good season um offensively uh other 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 people uh i, I feel uh, uh yolle yolle handunen is is going to have a a better season he's uh he was very raw last season. He's 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 getting there. Um, he's probably going to play some wing wing back for us, be able to block, but also catch some balls. Uh, Sampo was a good addition. Uh, I, like he's he's probably been or like people have seen him already in in Kotka before, and uh, like he's a he's a good good, good receiver addition for us. Uh, Nico Kanton and uh, I feel that like him. Put into a good good position, he can he can succeed, um, and that's that's a lot about the like us revamping the drop back yeah. offense. We weren't able weren't able to get the ball to him enough last season, and that's that's completely on me yeah. uh, as a play caller. But uh, I'm 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 very hopeful that we can we can incorporate him a bit little bit more uh, on the yeah. offensive line. Uh, Emily Tirkkonen, uh, our young guy. Uh, I think he's 16 year old years old, but he's he's a, he's a physical guy and he moves really well. So I'm hoping that he'll 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 be able to contribute on the offensive line. Um, on the defense, yeah, Gapo, I mentioned. I think uh, then um, um, we have <laughs> like I I feel that like our defense will surprise some people this season. Like uh, they've they've been re doing really well in practice. They have a really good attitude attitude. They're uh, Running for the ball and getting 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 inter interceptions and not not because our offense ne necessarily sucks but like uh, because <laughs> they're actually, actually working to intercept the balls, cause turnovers, all of that kind of stuff. So like, not necessarily one to one to call call out people on the defense because like uh, I feel that it's a unit and it plays well when every every part of that unit unit plays well. But like uh, like people like Mox. Max, uh, uh, then uh, Santu Tayakar, the de defensive line lineman, like he's 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 been developing well. Like there's a, there's a lot of guys that will most likely make plays uh, this season. Okay, all right. Last question, then I'm gonna let you get out of here, Pekka. Like, I, like I said, short interviews, man. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, last question, going into the season, you know, it's it's the Maple League, but again. This season is a lot more open than what we've seen in the past. I mean, yeah. after after last year's Maple Bowl and what happened there, you kind of feel like anybody could win it this year. It could be a, a turning point for a lot of teams. There's a lot of changeover for a lot of teams. You guys are one of, the, I want to say, just maybe three teams that are bringing back a, a real core core, and you're one of those teams, which – I think it gives you an advantage on other teams because you're yeah. able to practice year long and you don't have to change a lot. But with all these changes, what are you most excited about seeing in the 2024 Maple League season? Yeah, it's like like, like the Maple League in general is a very volatile league in the sense that like there are a lot of changes every year. You don't have to look back a few years only that like <laughs> the, the, the current defending champion was winless. Like at the yeah. at the butchers, I think we're all in five in 2020, and the crocodiles yeah. uh, were in a slump for a, li a little while. So like things can change real fast in this league, um, but in general, like I, I I feel that it's it's going to be interesting interesting to see. Um, the roosters have a new defensive coordinator, Kalle, mm -hmm. uh, stepping stepping into a smaller role this this season. And the, them bringing in an American defensive coordinator, coordinator, so the system there is going to be completely new. That's going to be interesting to see. It's going to be interesting to see uh, how uh, Nessie is able to, um, uh, uh, like, w w what's the Kuopio Steelers going to look like this season? Uh, what kind of yeah. culture will they have these 
and now uh, uh, the UNC, they're they're always a mystery at this point of the season. Like uh, what what's going to happen there? A lot of intrigue. Uh, not not to mention like I guess I, I guess like the bottom of butchers there. I feel stronger this season than they necessarily were last season. Like they they were able to bring a lot of new 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 gu- new guys and still keep their core core in, intact. But uh, yeah. Saying Ayoki Crocodiles, like that's another team that's like what will their offense look like now that they they have a new head coach and a play caller? Like it's and a new quarterback to, that that that's a lot of change for a team and for an offense. So like uh a lot of in, interesting stuff and like where the where where the scheme scheme is going, uh, I don't know. Like it, it it could be interesting to see like are more and more people trying to adopt like different different types of uh, schemes going into the future because like uh i think a lot a lot of teams have been doing this spread stuff for so long and the mm-hmm. defensive uh, defenses i feel have caught up with that so are people going more into that into that uh condensed kind of looks or are people still going to be in that spread for most of the time it's it's really interesting to see yeah those are a lot of interesting things. You went over the whole league. Thanks, Becca. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty much everything. You said it well, too. Whenever mm. you get done coaching, man, there's a spot for you on the podcast. That's for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Let me know. You just yeah, let we'll, me we'll, know. We'll, we'll like we, 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 have a, we had a bad tradition with the go up your way game. So, like, maybe, maybe after that. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. But again, Pekka, thanks for coming on the podcast, uh, answering all the questions, really updating us on what's going on with the Wolverines. Uh, good luck to you guys this season, and we'll be watching you here on the AFF podcast. Yeah, thanks, man. All right, let's talk about obstacles to overcome for the Wolverines. I don't know. I might have hit on everything in my last little tangent. Like, <laughs> tell, tell me something I didn't say, Q. Tell me something I didn't say. You, man, you said a lot about that. Uh, obstacle for them to overcome, man, is, is, is everything, man. Uh, like my first answer, I think the Wolverines really need to uh, understand that the season comes fast. I think they, I think they know that, but to really understand it, like any decisions that you're planning on making, you need to make now. So you can get the guys, you know, in line and, and get the guys ready for the season um, as, as quick as you can and as, you know, as efficient as you can. Um, you said something about the experience. Um, you can get good and bad experience. I personally, um, and it's just from a coaching standpoint, feel like all experience is good. Um, but it's only good if the coaches are telling you what you're supposed to be looking for. Like, yeah, exactly. It, 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 ain't, it ain't good experience if you get beat and then they never go over to play in, in – on film study, <laughs> you know what I mean. So, if, if you get beat by the same play over and over and over, over and over, yeah. that means you're not getting better, and no one is making you no, get better. Exactly. Um, I think the Wolverines are actually at a at a point where they they have to rely on coaching. Um, mm-hmm. I think now this is this is a part of coaching that a lot of coaches go away from now. Um, I think a lot of people want to be coaches, but then avoid the actual coaching part of it. This is the mm-hmm. part, the developmental part. Like, you have to be able to sit and watch a player. Um, you tell him something and then watch what he does the next play. All right? He, he might do half of what you said. Now you got to go right back. Hey, man, you did this. You started off good, but you got to turn your hips. You got to do this. That's part of coaching that I think the Wolverines need. They need that type of coaching where you're hands-on every day in practice. You may not be able to get a lot of stuff done um, as a as a whole, but what you are doing is focusing on players that you know can make plays for you. So sometimes you have to sacrifice a little bit of team time, um, a little bit of special team time to go over some stuff that will help them eventually become better football players. And I think the Wolverines are at that that point now where they need that type of coaching. Um, everybody has philosophies. Everybody has strategies when they come in. You know, you come in with the coach, you give you the playbook, like, hey, this is our philosophy this year. Uh, <laughs> hustle, run have fun you know what i mean like that's that's literally what what the wolverines are probably going through every year and then at some point you actually have to coach you actually have mm-hmm. to go out there and make these guys better yes you can bring in imports but you can't bring in 22 imports it's impossible i know teams have tried and they still didn't win we got you know they I mean? got the so, got close to it a couple of years ago matter of fact yeah, yeah it's like yeah. that that didn't work like you actually have to coach 
And um, I think a lot of times coaches don't want to do that, even in Finland. I mean, if it's not your full-time job and then you say, hey, I got to look at film, I got to look at film, uh, you know, and, and not the elongated, but I'm just saying when I was coaching, when I'm a coach, when I was a player, film study for me was three hours, easily three hours. And that's that's when I was playing. You know what I'm saying? Forget what the coaches was called. Coaches call us in there and tell us, hey, we're going to have film study. And then we go over the film for 35 minutes. But as a player, I'm watching two, three hours of film every game, even the old games. I'm trying to see what I could have did better. Oh, could hold I got on, though, faster? Q. Hold on. Yeah. We got to remind people, back when me and you were playing, there wasn't no Netflix. There wasn't no Tinder. Oh, yeah. There, yeah. Your, your <laughs> cell phone minutes, your data <laughs> didn't even exist. You had we to was, pay for for all that. You couldn't stream nothing on the phone. So yeah, we was actually look. happy to get a DVD. You know, I told people <laughs> like a few weeks ago. I was like, we had DVDs when I was in college for like like every every week on Sunday. Our DB coach would bring them I mean, in. The linebacker coach would bring us a DVD, and they got the team that we about to play, and then it has the team we play after them. So we watching film on a team that we about to play. And I'm watching this all week. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I think coaches have to do that, um, have to teach players that in Europe, period, because that's not something that, even when I was there, that's not something that they harp on. They don't harp on film study. And I tell people all the time, you can do 100 cone drills. You can do the ladders all day, but that's not going to help you when it's fourth and one and you need to figure out what play and what gap and when to shoot it and all that stuff. That's not going to help you. Playing in the game does that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so – Coaches have to get you mentally prepared, but also teach you how to be a football player. The actual field part is physical, yes, but you need to be a, a student of the game. And this is why they say a student, because you have to study. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just watch film and be like, oh, look at that play. Look at that play. So I think the Wolverines, um, they need a, a serious, serious, you know, uh, uh, talk of organization and just coaches. Like, hey, this is what we want to do. This is how we implement it. In order for us to get better, we have to do this. We have to start here on the basics. We have to do this. We have to do that. And eventually, if you pour it into something, person, team, whatever it is, it's going to give you something back if you pour into mm-hmm. it. And I think that's the thing is, like, they have to make that decision. Hey, we want to do this. We're going to start out with getting our quarterback, our finished quarterback. He needs help up front. All right, so let's get him some linemen. You know what I mean? Like, now let's let's get him some, some, some guys around him that can – Make plays and and give them a chance, but don't just go out there, throw them out there with some half decent linemen and one in play action. Yeah, run play, play action, action passes. You got him. Man, turn around. And <laughs> he running out of the pocket every play because he ain't got time to read nothing. So the whole game looks sloppy for him. You know what I mean? Like don't 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 allow that because that football players when these seasons go by, that's a, that's two years of our life pretty much physically. Mm-hmm. So you just wasting time. So I think the Wolverines really need to. You know, sit back and say, "Hey, you know, this is what we want to do. Lay it all out. Let the let the guys know what's the plan, and then execute it." Um, are you going to go ten and zero? No, you know what I'm saying it doesn't work like that. You have to work. You have to get better. But the main thing, Wolverines coach. That's all I'm going to say. Keys to win. Keys to success. Coaching. You have to do that. Yeah. You can't just throw out there and hope for the best. Well, we was on obstacles to overcome, but yeah, okay, well, yeah keys to success as well. <laughs> they kind of they just say. A lot of times, so it's yeah. not a big issue. But uh, for me, obstacle to overcome for the Wolverines, I think is I'm a, I'm gonna get real, you know, outside the box on you here. Uh, obstacle to overcome is being in Helsinki, <laughs> being in Helsinki, because as we've said before, you know, death getting players that's a tough thing to do. The Wolverines are easily the the least attractive place to play in Helsinki right now. Oh, yeah. In, in the Helsinki area. So they've lost players, and this is just the facts of it, and you'll see it when you see rosters come out. They've lost players to the Lawyer Crusaders. They would lose players to the Helsinki Roosters if the if Helsinki they Roosters them. wanted their players. <laughs> yeah, they need them. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> just, <laughs> Roosters probably just don't want their players, per se. Um, they've they at times they lost players to the East City East City Giants, and to me that's just that's tough. But yeah. you know, there's there's guys like we talked about in the previous show when we're talking about the Loyal Crusaders. They have guys coming from Turku. You have to go through Helsinki to get to Loya. Like if you're in <laughs> Turku, maybe you don't have to go through Helsinki. I'm looking at the map now. You can actually just go straight to Loya. But 
it's a similar distance. Like you're like, do I go to Loyal or do I go to Helsinki? And they're choosing Loyal. Like, I'm, I mean, I don't want to be too down on the city, the but culture. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is yeah. in Helsinki being the Wolverines doesn't provoke that like, oh, well, you know, I'm a Helsinki team or I'm playing for the Wolverine. Like they don't have that stigma that you want to be there. Um, a lot of a lot of the whole the whole reason that the Wolverines exist is because they didn't want to be the Roosters. So they wanted to be, you know, the rivals of the Roosters. I've been in Finland for eight years. They've never really been the rivals of the Roosters. They've always been a little little brother that somehow shares the same practice field. Like I've never felt like they're on the same level. And that's an obstacle that they have to continually overcome is how do you get people to want to be part of what you have going on in Helsinki? Because Helsinki, there's a lot of things to do. It's hard to get players to come to Helsinki and actually play football. There's a million things going on. I remember a few years ago, a French guy named Pierre Corrigo came to the Helsinki Roosters, and this guy, he came to practices, and then that was it. And you've never seen him again because he was in Helsinki because there's so much to do. Enjoy the time. <laughs> and that's what you're fighting against when you're, when you're a Helsinki-based team. Getting new players is hard because you're telling somebody in the Helsinki – metropolitan that instead of doing you know all these millions of things we have you know you mm-hmm. can't go to um afro sundays because you gotta uh go to practice <laughs> or go to games <laughs> and you're trying to get those people to join what you're doing or someone who's already on your team you're telling them to stay even though you don't you know you can't give them the resources they need to be successful compared exactly. to other teams in the same area in the same area so my obstacle for them is to overcome being in Helsinki because I honestly believe if this the roster they have and the organization they have right now, if it was in a different city, say, I mean, this is, I mean, this might be blasphemy, but say they were in Porvu or Kutka, they'd have a much better chance of being consistent and doing a lot of things that we've talked about previously. Yeah. But since they're in Helsinki, it's really hard to get a lot of things done in that area when there's so many um, distractions, similar to like what you were saying about, hey, you need to get in the film room and watch film. Ain't nobody watching film in Helsinki. We going to Finkino. We going to hit up a Taco <laughs> Bell. We going to uh, turn on these apps. See, some, some, of these, some of these players are kids. They doing Pokemon Go, keeping it innocent. Some of them Tinder and Grinder, like it's whatever, or Bumblebee, whatever the apps is. I don't know. I ain't that young. But what I'm saying is, there's a lot of distractions in that area, and this team has to fight those distractions. And they don't, they don't even necessarily give you the incentive to fight them. Like if you were to try to recruit someone to play for the Helsinki Wolverines, what can you give them that no one else can? Yeah, it, a blue helmet. I guess. And it used That's to, it used to be. Not to cut you, not to cut you off, but I'm oh, going to say this, like, like my first year, my first year in Helsinki, um, it used to be a prideful thing to 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 see guys say they played for the Wolverines. Um, I got to Helsinki in 2008, and it used to be a thing, you know, like being a Wolverine player or being a Roosters player um, used to be something prideful, you know what I mean? Now it's still the same, I think, with the Roosters. But the Wolverines, it has, it's been years since people looked at them the way that they used to look at them. Back when they had Stokes. Back when Sid played. Oh, them. yeah. Um, the days, the days. You know what I mean? Back when they had Joseph Doss. Like, like it was times, it was a, a two, three-year time where the Wolverines were better than the Roosters. You know what I mean? Mm. Like, consistently, like two, three years. Um, but then the Roosters, you know, they did what they needed to do to get back to where, you know, they were before Um with the help of Rojo but that, and some of but that that's the difference you know, also. Like, There's a difference between, you know, having a good team and having a good organization and culture. Yeah, Like, yeah. anybody, you could, lightning strikes in a bottle, you can get a good team. Yeah. But then that well, team doesn't good. last because yeah. the culture isn't there. And that's what I'm saying about Helsinki is that yeah. we, we've we seen it, too. Like, players are going to go to where, wherever they yeah. have the best situation. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, the Wolverines don't, don't give you the best situation. Like they can't, they yeah. can't outbid anybody. They've lost players due to you know, well, somebody offered them this and we couldn't match it. 
you know, financially, or it's like we couldn't give them, you know, this situation that they wanted. And yeah. it's like if you can't, you have to have something to beat people with. The Roosters, even though they haven't, I think we said this on one of the other shows. You missed the Rooster episode, sorry, but mm. I think we said the Roosters haven't been won the Maple Bowl since like 2019. I think they went to it in 2020, something like that, or 2021. They went. They lost they the win. They, yeah, they lost the corporate. Yeah. yeah, I think 2021 they went, but they didn't yeah. win it. And that's the last time they like been to the big game. But even even then, even then, saying that's three years ago, the Roosters are still the Roosters. Like if you're looking at like, okay, where do I want to go play, the Roosters are still, still one of the organizations you want to go to. Yeah, still looking at one of the top organizations. Yeah. Yeah. So again, winning isn't necessarily everything. But if you have that, you know, that culture built in, it translates and people know that. These players that go from these other teams, and again, I don't mean to throw the teams under the bus, but, you know, all the coach good players, they're gone. Um, a lot mm-hmm. of the, the Wolverine players from three seasons ago. So three seasons ago, remember when that when that squad looked yeah. like they had kind of homegrowns? Them homegrowns yeah. not there no more. Now they're those kids that were 16 and 15 years old at that time are now the, the Wolverines. But the guys that were 26, 27, they're not there. Yeah. And they're still playing. They're somewhere else. They're just not there in Helsinki. Yeah. They've gone other places. And you have teams like that and even like Turku where they left for a while because all the older guys quit, even the young kids from Turku. The, the, a lot of those players have played for the Loya Crusaders, the Wolverine mm-hmm. City Giants. Like They've moved around to try to find a home because none of those teams – offer them a, a actual building block of where they can actually play. So that's mm-hmm. one thing that, um, again, going back to my obstacle before we move on, is that they got to overcome being in the Helsinki area and not being able to offer what everyone else can offer, yeah, basically. Offer. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. So I guess we can move on now. Sorry, we ran a little long. <laughs> we make it count, though. <laughs> we make it this time. Yeah, I pretty much answered my question on the last one anyway. <laughs> hey there, fans of American football in Finland. Want to show some love and support to your favorite podcast? For just three euros, you can buy us a cup of coffee and help keep our podcast running strong. But why stop at one cup? Why not support each host with a cup? Visit buymeacoffee.com and show your support today. Cheers to keeping the conversation going. All right, I'm here with Darius Lewis from the Helsinki Wolverines, defensive back. Darius, welcome to the podcast, Mm -hmm. man. How you doing? I mean, defensive back? Or athlete. Don't you play defensive back? Oh, my bad. Athlete. Gosh. Oh, oh, oh. Well, A-T-H. now we know. ATH. My bad. <laughs> athlete. Anyways, athlete. Glad to have you on the show, man. Yeah, man. Like, it's nice to be here once again. I'm always here about every nine months, every, every, every nine, ten months, I find myself here. And that's nice. Well, that's true. Yeah, we do. We do. I cho- I make my way back to you. I know a lot of people, but I always make my way back to you. That's what I do. I always make my way back to you. But uh, hey, let's let's it. hop into this interview. Let's hop into it, mm-hmm. man. Uh, we're talking about the 2024 Maple League season. First things yeah. first, you showed up in Helsinki last year. I don't know how long you were here, but I think you were here long enough to get a cup of coffee before you injured yourself. And then <laughs> you stayed. I wasn't, all off I wasn't here that like- I wasn't I here that long. Oh, yeah. Okay. Man, listen. What? So, 2020. Did you get a cup? 2020, you didn't get a cup? <laughs> no, man. I got a broken phone when I went to the hospital. Crazy. So, <laughs> 20, 2022, uh, the, the defensive import they had here messed up his ankle, broke his ankle or something. And they called me to come in last week of July. That's how I got introduced to the management, introduced to the team. Um, they got to learn a little bit of who I am. The players got to see a little bit of who I was. And, of course, you know, some people in Finland got to see that I am uh, of value in certain areas that they may or may not need. So when 2023 came around in July, just like last time, they said, hey, we could use your resources right now. Uh, we would like you to come be a coach. and." to come play for us. And I said, okay, cool. And I arrived um, within the same week that I arrived. Our first game was against Vasa. 
So I came in, immediately got to practice. I didn't get a chance to really put my bags down. Um, got to see who was on the team this year as compared to last year. Uh, and in the fourth quarter of the game, I tore my Achilles. <laughs> so my Achilles Boy. is, is gone. And it's my first major sports injury that I've ever had, which is ridiculous. Um, so a week later, I get surgery. And the coaches, they say, well, can you still coach? And I say, yes. So anyone who's been to practices, I mean, I saw you. You saw me hobbling around and still running with the boot as if, you know. So I was able to build a lot of uh, trust within the team, within my teammates, within the coaches, and a lot of respect also. And that carried on into this whole offseason. And uh, we decided that we were going to try once more, once more for this season and see what we can make of it. Okay. All right. That makes sense. So going into this season, you know, it's a little bit different than what the last year, everything you just said, you explained it well. What is something that you think you're trying to get accomplished in this season? I don't like to repeat anything. Um, I feel like it's human nature to want more than before. And, you know, the Wolverines had the record that they had last year, and I don't want to repeat that record, you know, despite what it might be. Because for the players on the team, more than it is for me, um, the players need to see that whatever things, whatever your circumstances are, whatever your situation is, does not have to repeat itself um, once that has already happened. And that's in life, that's with family, that's with football. And they know where they were. They know their mindset. They know how they played in the games. They should not repeat themselves if they don't want the same results. And I feel like me being here has been a huge role in that, not because I'm anyone special, but because I'm able to help bring that out of other people and tell them you are more than what you think. And I'm seeing it and I'm like reinforcing what you think you're seeing. Yes, you are getting better. And that's felt good to us this whole offseason. Okay. So going into the season, let's talk on the field then. What things can we expect from the Wolverines to be better or improve from last year? I mean, you can really only go up from last year, but what things specifically have you guys been working on in the offseason that you think will see the improvement in these first couple of weeks? Any young guy is a little bit timid when they enter a game. Um, any new person in Europe is a little bit timid when they first step on the field. They have that experience now under their belt. They've played against uh, imports from the top league, from Maple League and Division One, because a lot of the players were playing you know, on both of the first and second team. They've seen all that they needed to see. So I keep reminding the guys, like, what else do you, you have? Those that play in corner, you faced a 6'5 American at Costco last year. So You've had the height. They're not going to get that much taller than that. I doubt they're going to have a six, seven, six, eight receiver come in here. So you have you had that experience under your belt. Now you've played that way before. Now you got to play a little bit better. So what you were saying about what we expect out of the season, I'm just expecting everybody to be a little bit better than they were before. And it's up to us as a unit, a defensive unit, a linebacker unit, a DB unit, a whatever, however you specifically want to break it down. It's up to those guys to take it as far as they want it to go. And what I am hoping for is not to repeat the same thing that they had last year. And uh, I can't speak for the, the magnitude of the growth that they've had because I've seen what I've seen at practice, but then everyone's reminding me that, hey, injuries are a big thing here in Finland and anyone can go down on any day. So as much as I want to say that, you know, we're going to do this this year. We're going to do that this year. I have to learn what the first half of finished football is like because I only know the second half. That makes sense. You only know the second half. So getting a little into the roster of the Roosters, I mean the Wolverines. I don't know. Why, I always mm. get those two teams confused. But uh, you guys, you've been around them all off season, so you kind of got to know the guys this year a little bit better. Who are some of the uh, mm. players that you're expecting to kind of break out this year for you guys that maybe we don't know their names and stuff like that? If you could throw out some names, if you can pronounce them. I don't know last names, but uh, we have okay. at least as, as, far, as far as I know, our coach of DBs, I work with the DBs, so I can speak on Capo and Fizo. These are two young guys who 
Fizo just came off of winning a U17 championship. You know, Capo and Fizo have been to the uh, player pathway camps that they've had here. Um, and these are two people who expect completely different things, mainly because they are young boys becoming men. Fizo is still growing. Capo is still growing uh, vertically and muscularly, you know. So you're going to see a completely different athlete out of them. You know, most of these other players who've been here three, four years in Maple League, they've reached the peak of their height and their size. And you're probably going to get a little bit difference, but not so much. Now, these other guys, these younger guys, my biggest uh, coaching point with them is you only know this much information and your body is only this like much. But as your body grows, you're going to be able to add more skills to your skill set and you're going to develop as a player. So mm -hmm. I feel like as a coach, uh, speaking from the coach side, um, it really matters that players understand that what you were before does not have to be who you are next year. And you're just riding the same old bicycle. We've instead of riding a bicycle with no gears, now you have a 21 speed bike that can that has a. Uh, electric motor on it it's a completely new bike but it's the same tires you know what i mean mm. so yeah i mean i'm bad with analogies maybe you don't know what i mean but i'm just <laughs> you are um, horrible with analogies but i do understand that one <laughs> we're, not, we're not gonna go to the other now so these two these two for sure um yeah as far rasmus he has been getting a lot of extra work in so he's been working out with guys from different teams. Anyone who said, hey, I want to get some work in, who can throw, if he's around and they reach out to him, he's willing to put an extra work in. So expect a different Rasmus this year. Expect a different core of young guys this year. That's what I can 100% sure guarantee. Specifically, I can't because I only know the guys at the second half of the season. So who knows how fatigued they were? Who knows if they were better when I came than after when I came? These things I can't speak on. But the younger guys, I've seen them and been coaching them since September when everyone was in playoffs. Anyone who was under U20 was on the field practicing at Velo. That's four months in that year. Now it's been three months. They've been training for seven months and putting in work. And anybody who knows anything knows if even if you do 1% work, you're going to be that much better than someone who's mm -hmm. not. Or yourself. Because if you've been sitting on the couch this whole time, you know, you can still jump out here and do what you do. But are you going to be better or are you going to be the same? I, I think that also goes the, the other way because I feel like I'm on the couch every day and I'm just getting worse. I ain't getting no better. No better. <laughs> but you are because you're not just sitting on the couch. You're using your time wisely and editing and learning new things about software and other things. You're developing a oh, different yeah. skill. Oh. Now this podcast game, oh yeah, I'm getting that one percent every day. But physically, ooh, I'm going the other way. I can't get out there and shake a bag right. like I used to. But mentally, if you needed to get out there, you know you've been watching the football to know that okay, I need to be in this position to make this play because you still been uh doing mental work. I don't know. I'm just you're, hey, you're you're you're, you're young. Playing, That's why you don't understand. I'm playing, when you, I'm playing angels advocate, not devil's advocate. I'm playing yeah, angels advocate. I see that. I see that. You're young because anyone who's 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 gotten up to where I am in the years know you get out there. And you're like, I need to be here, and he's be like, okay, I'm gonna do it. And then your body's like, what the fuck you think this is, buddy? <laughs> and then you don't do it. That's pretty much how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> but some people do. Well, I mean. Hopefully people Some do. People do. I, yeah. I haven't those played it up. Athletes do. Mm -hmm. You're never gonna get to where I am in life. You're you're an athletic, young, staying athletic type of guy. You like to go to the gym. Me, I've I do everything I can not to go to the gym. I was just now I'm getting way off topic of the interview. We'll get back to it, but I was just talking to someone the other day. I don't eat certain fatty foods because I don't want to go to the gym to work it off. Uh, <laughs> that's how that's how much I don't go to the gym. Let me get the fried chicken, but uh, take the skin off for me, please. It's, exactly. Right, sure. no problem. <laughs> Look, I, I'm gonna get the fried chicken. I don't want a coke. I just want water with it, you know. And and I I don't want no dipping sauce. No dipping sauce. You, 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 no, you, no, no, no. 
you you could do what uh the, the kids do you could pour like half coke and then pour the rest with water and you know have that nasty little concoction of See, no, uh, no, uh, no, half look, coke. if you're gonna if you're gonna do it go all the way i don't drink diet coke i don't eat vegan i don't eat turkey bacon like I, i'm not a big bacon guy but if i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it I you know what bacon. i ain't gonna eat turkey I'm bacon never, but uh, yeah. If you're gonna eat bacon, eat bacon. If you're gonna drink Coke, drink Coke. Like if you're gonna mm. drink a beer, don't make it a Bud Light. Just drink. Uh, uh, let me get. Let me, let me get the beer. Pepsi Zero. You have Pepsi Zero? No, nah, I don't want Pepsi. Then I do. <laughs> Give me the Pepsi. <laughs> I, don't, I, I do not understand the point of drinking diet drinks at all. If it's a soda, which is still it's still a soda, it's not good for you. And I, t- you're I talking tell to somebody. I'd rather. I'd rather so I drink no a beer idea. than a coke, than a soda. I'd rather drink a beer than a soda. Because if I'm gonna mess up my body, I'm gonna get a little drunk too. <laughs> Look, yeah. I'm gonna let you get out of here, Darius. I got one more question for you. Going into the 2024 mm-hmm. season, Maple League, a lot of changes. You guys have a little bit of a change personnel wise, as well as everyone else around the league. What are you most excited about seeing this year in the Maple League? Like, what excites you about this league this come, upcoming season? There's a lot of great imports coming. So whatever you say you are, you better be. And we have every opportunity to be tested in that uh, in that thing right there. Because, um, I mean, we start the season off against Corpio. So um, every single chance that we step on the field. I like to be the underdog. I like to be – I don't like being on, like, a, a Quopio-esque type of team where I just have to show up and I might not play in the fourth quarter. Like, every single game we play, we're going to have to play until the last seconds of the fourth quarter. And that's football to me. And I get to – I've been asking for this, and I have a perfect opportunity to do it. Also, coming off of an Achilles tear, which many people don't know, but many people won't know because I've been 100% cleared by the doctor two months ago. so. Turned a five and a half month injury into a it's impossible to re risk to re injure yourself. Now it's just like, okay, well, like Purvis said, are you going to get old and I can't do what I used to do, or are you an athlete? So, personally, I'm excited. Oh man, cut it off again. All right, y'all. Personally, I'm trying to see if I am who I say I am. A lot of y'all in Finland don't know who I am and don't know what I bring to the table. For the team, I'm most excited for the team, for them individually to see who they are and who we tell them they are and reinforce and remind them every single day. They get a chance to see and prove that every single game, four quarters, not three quarters, not a half of a football game, but four quarters every single game. So I really hope that y'all Come and watch the game that y'all do watch. You know, the ones on Route 2 ain't going to be the same because you're not going to be able to hear all the crazy stuff that we're going to be saying. Like, in the game, there's a lot of communication going on that we haven't had in the past, but I promise you it's we're, bring football back. Make football great again. <laughs> Make football great again. That's my message to everybody. And chase your goals, man. Sometimes a setback. Ain't really a setback. If you ever seen that meme where something's going in a straight line and then that thing going in a roller coaster up and down, the one going up and down reaches their goal faster than the one going in a straight line. So I hope that your ups and downs are blessings in your life and not the opposite. And I appreciate y'all, you know, coming to my TED Talk. So for American Football Finland, for Vincent Purvis, who's in the bathroom away right now, um, thank you, y'all, for tuning in, and I hope to hear from y'all soon. Hope to see y'all comments, and I hope that y'all enjoy yourselves and have a great day. Oh man, wait until you see the cutouts when you've been gone. This man, this man, over here running his own podcast while my internet is down. <laughs> hey, you don't even know. Wait till you see. I love it. Um... I'm, I'm assuming that you finished your answer. I just didn't get to hear Yeah, so give me so, another question. Um, One more question. I'll be- I don't, that's all the questions I have. I don't have any other, anything else that I really want to know. No. What do you want to tell us? How about that? What do you, what what do you, you like to feel them more? I want people to know that 
there's more than what football in Finland has to offer. And I've been telling a lot of people, like, just because you play football here doesn't mean that this is the only place that you're going to play. Just because you play football here doesn't mean that the level is going to stay the same. The level is what you want it to be. If you step your game up, your opponents have to step their game up as well. If you set a certain standard, that standard has to be met by everybody you play. Kuopio has done a good job of that. Roosters have done a good job of that. Senyoki recently and Porvu have done a good job of that. Now everybody else has to follow suit. So use that as an analogy, Mr. Not Good With Analogies, to be better in your life, be better at work, be better at home, be better with your families. I hear you, but I don't see you. You talking about me? Yeah, you. <laughs> you hear me? I wasn't even saying anything. That's just TV in the background. I was just letting you do your thing. But I look, I don't want to be a hater, but I'm going to be a hater because you bring this out of me, Darius, okay? I just like doing a Good. little bit of shit talking with you. Hey, yin what and if, yang, you know? Yeah, what if instead of everybody getting better, the top teams just get worse. <laughs> and then we're then all that's their <laughs> Then that's their fault. You can't let the actions of other people determine how you conduct yourself. So if I mean we can we I mean let's be real. A bunch of the local Finnish players have left Finland to go and play in other places. Right? So whoever does what this year, that's gonna be the excuse. Well, they lost this player to this and this player to that. That's not my problem. You should have kept them. You should have had enough in your program to keep your guy there. And because you lost them, I don't want to hear your excuse. I don't want to hear no buts oh, no, and ifs. We did. And if we don't do it, we didn't do it. So, and because we're speaking real, we've lost some finished talent, but we've added extra imports. And they're bringing in imports from fr guys fresh out. And it's going to be college guys. It's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. And I've been so quiet, but anybody at our practices will tell you I, I won't shut up. I won't shut up about it. And I, I try not to talk about it because I start getting feisty and they take it as me being aggressive. And I'm like, well, I am aggressive because now I want to hit somebody in the mouth. Like mm. not being able to run does something to you when you spend your whole life running. I jog for the bus when I don't have to. I jog to the store when I don't have to. In loafers, like I mean, in in in, in these dress shoes from H and M with the little thing on it, so I can keep my toes here, and I'm every single chance I get. So you know, I want it, and I hope that the people on the team want it as bad as I do. I won't know it until the first game, second game, third game, and I hope the teams that we play don't play to the level of their competition because it's coming. So I gotta say, ain't All nobody right. new. Yeah. It's just. We're bringing more out of the people that are already here. We're not bringing nobody new into the equation. It's just we're bringing more out of what was here already. All right, Darius Lewis said it all for the Helsinki Wolverines. Uh, thank you for coming on the podcast. And good luck to you and the uh, Helsinki Wolverines this upcoming season, man. Thanks for coming on. The first person to wish us luck. I ain't going to forget that. I'm not going to forget that. So, you know, when I get interviewed now, I'm be like, oh, first of all, shout out to American Football Film and Vincent Purvis who gave us uh, the good luck wishes and, you know, helped contribute to what we did on the field today. Now, what's your first question? <laughs> Watch. Oh, I'll take that plug. I'll take it. All right, let's talk about keys to success for the Wolverines. I'll start this one off. I, I think it's very simple. For them to be successful in the season, they need to keep games close. I know it's really vague because there's a lot of different ways they could do it. And I, I think I left it vague so I could go into those different ways. But we've seen them like if the, when early in the game, when it looks like they have a chance, they're able to do their offense. They're able to play the way they want to. And that, that allows them to lengthen the game. And then mm -hmm. at the end of the game, you know, maybe something to happen. Maybe you can pull a bunny out the out the hat or something. I don't know. But if they want to be successful, they have to keep the games close. They can't get in situations where they need to come back. They can't get in situations where their defense is what they need to win the game. Win the like, game. I'm yeah. just going to throw it out there. Their, their defense is not going to be able to win them games. But if they keep it close, they have a couple players out there that can make plays. And that's all they need to do is give themselves a chance. But for them to be successful, they have to keep it within reason 
we saw last year, a lot of times we said we saw flashes of, you know, greatness. They'd have really good drives. And then at the end of the drive, they'd have a false start. Then they'd have a quarterback sack. And now they're not in field goal range. Well, they don't have a great kicker in the first place, but they're not in field goal range and they can't score. So now all that time is wasted and they go to defense and give up a touchdown. So that's a 14 point swing compared to if they were able to just stay calm, finish a drive, get some points, and then make the other team drive the entire field on the next possession. So that's something they have to do this season to be successful is they have to keep the games within reason. Anytime they get down by more than 14 points, it's a wrap. Like a wrap. they're not built for that. Like that mm-hmm. offense as no matter what change they made to the offensive line, no matter how how good Rasmus is going to play, if they're down by two touchdowns, it's a wrap because their defense isn't going to be able to create those type of turnovers. And that's no knock on who they have there, but you just got to be realistic. If a team is up by two touchdowns and your offense doesn't score, and the other team decides to start running the ball, how are you going to create turnovers? Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm saying is you have to keep it close. If you get down by two touchdowns, you got to put up points. You have to be able to figure out a way to score points so that the other team feels some type of pressure to score instead of being able to dictate what they want to do to your defense. And yeah. that's what I think they need to be to, to be successful is they need to keep games close. What about you, Q? No, I, I definitely agree with that. I think they need to actually um, be in the game. You know what I mean? Like they, they – when you know you don't have the depth that you have, you have to have a strategy to where you're you're putting yourself where the guys aren't that tired. They, I mean, they should be tired, but they aren't in a position where they're exhausted when you need them the most. You know what I mean? That fourth quarter, uh, you down a touchdown or you up a touchdown, or anything like that. Um, the difference between teams that have depth and don't have depth is is the ability to be able to switch guys in at certain points of the game to give them a leverage. And um, I think the Wolverines, that's something they'll be lacking. So I think they have mm-hmm. to actually, like you said, in some kind of capacity, keep these games in reach um, to where you got a chance and, and you got a way to, you know, pull out a win in some kind of way. Um, but it first starts with, with with finding a way to get in the end zone. Um, as simple as that sounds, that's what they have to do. The, you're not going to be in any games if you can't score any points. So if you can't score points, then it's, it's pointless to, 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 to hope for, for much. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of like my Pittsburgh Steelers this last season, like, it didn't matter. Like, we won 10 games. I have no idea how. Um, but we didn't have any offense. We barely could Can I throw this out there? Game. Yeah. Can I throw this out there? <clears throat> it's crazy how uh, Pittsburgh Steelers and Iowa Buckeyes – and the Iowa Hawkeyes had very similar, like, football seasons. Yeah, like, Football-wise. Like, yeah. like always re- I always think of Iowa when I think of Pittsburgh from last year because both teams offensively did very little – but still were able to get wins. Yeah. Uh, the Buckeyes won – I mean, the Hawkeyes. I don't know why I keep calling them the Buckeyes. The Hawkeyes yeah. won um, a conference. They they yeah. won the Big, big they Ten. They always win the Big Ten championship game anyway. They always – Yeah, they, like. they, they got to the champ- – they won one of the conferences by, like, scoring, like, eight points a week. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's just, you know, referencing them, that's what the Wolverines um, – you got to hope for, that you get a defense mm-hmm. that, can, that, can, that can make some plays – they keep you in the game. And I think the Wolverines, if they can do that, then they'll have some success. How much success is based off of what their expectations is on the season. You know, I don't think we can answer that, but we can tell you ways to to get some success, something that generally mm-hmm. people look at as success, and that's usually scoring points. Yeah. I think that's it for uh, uh, Helsinki Wolverines, man. We move on. That's it for this episode of American Football in Finland. Any last words before we get out of here, Q? No, nah, that's it, man. You know, good luck to those guys uh, getting ready for the season. Uh, like we said, you know what I'm saying? You know, try to try to figure it out and, and, and give something. And you want to give people something to be proud of. You want to give these fans something to be proud of when they come to these games. You know, it's time to, it's time to show. It's, it's that time right now. Everybody's working to get better. So I just hope the Wolverines doing the same thing. You know what I got to say about the Wolverines? I really, I really hope that they actually play much better this year because I have a Wolverine snapback and it's one of the best ones I got. Like that logo on that hat looks really good. But I can't be wearing it if they out here taking L's all the time, you know? Wow. So, you know, just win a couple games, start looking good so I can put it on. 
I actually like to just wear it around. But at the same time, you know, can't just be wearing around a hat knowing that yeah. the team ain't, you know, doing their thing. <laughs> so I, I don't care if it look good or not. I know some people don't care. I was like, I do care. Like, mm. I'm, I'm very – y'all know – Everybody knows I'm very bandwagon on this thing here. Like, if you winning, I got you. If you losing, you got to talk I ain't about the it. one. I, I'm, I'm that Homer Simpson uh, meme, you know, slide back into the bushes all the way, yeah. come out with a new one. With a new hat on. Like, <laughs> yeah, with a new hat on every time. <laughs> so, uh, Wolverines, though, like, I really hope y'all do have a good season. Uh, we wish you the best of luck, man. We, we're, we're rooting for you. You know, we, we talked – very tough on the Wolverines because we have high expectations for that organization and we believe them to be one of the better organizations in Finland. So we're rooting for you this year to, you know, step up and get back into the swing of things. Um, we'll be watching you here on the AFF podcast. Everybody else, make sure you subscribe, like, follow, share on the social media channels at American Football in Finland. And until next time, Never forget T I F. We gone. We gone.